So, after a brief re review of uh, signals, more specifically 2D signals and uh, some of the interesting signals uh, that will be routinely used, it is time now to review systems. Recall, remember we are going to take a signals and systems approach. So, in the imaging system we have some input, right? We have an input which is our 3D spatial distribution. So, a 3D object, but it is essentially human body, but you have some inherent signals of interest. So, we are a distribution of whatever property as seen by the principle of the imaging system. So, we will denote f of x y as the underlying input spatial distribution function and uh, your system is going to be represented by h which is very typical you would have seen this in you know typical 1D uh, signals and systems and then output image is going to be represented by g of x y. I mean uh, I will try to be uh, as clear as possible as we go forward, but uh, the general intention is to use f of x y for input and g of x y for output. Okay. So, what is a system? I mean quickly to run through what is a system or oh, signal we covered. So, this is signal, this is another signal. right? So, what is a system? Well, as you can see here, anything that operates on an input at the, at the you know, broadest level, it is something that operates on the input to give you another signal. So, it operates on an input signal to give an output signal. right? So, in our case, it is going to be a spatial distribution at the input and a spatial distribution at the output. The objective of the system is to make sure the output is as close as possible to the input or the unknown underlying distribution. Okay. This is fine. So, essentially what this says is you can use a system, right? you can use a system to capture the underlying, uh, take, take the input and transform it into an output which seems nice, I mean it kind of connects everything, but it does not really tell you, we cannot really mathematically write it and uh, do analysis of the system in this all encompassive manner. right? So, it is too general. So, what we need to do is, okay, system is something that operates on an input uh, to generate an output is fine, but can we uh, whittle down to some desirable uh, conditions right? or properties of such a system where we could write out the mathematical expression to convey this system operation, right? what the system does, what the system behaves. So, if you want to characterize, analyze the system, how do we write it down mathematically? Is there uh, ways or simple assumptions that we can encounter or sorry, apply to make this happen? So, one of the first um, important property of a system is going to be linear, nothing different from what you would have known from 1D signals and systems. So, when you say linear, linearity, what does it mean? Well, think about it, immediately you may call about some theorems and say how to prove linearity, but what is the, the big picture? What does it try to convey? What does linearity imply physically? right you have uh, h of right this is your system you have system what is this we really do not know i just written some formulation some representation but what do we know here oh we know this f of x y what is this f of x y that is my input so if you have to read this what this physically means it says this is some weight, let us call w as a weight. So, you have a function f of x comma y. So, if I give f of x y to this system h, if this h operates on f of x comma y, I get an output g of x y. What happens if I give to this system 
this signal this input what is this input this means f of f k of x comma y f of x comma y i know what is this f k of x comma y f 1 of x comma y f 2 of x comma y so these are different input functions each one has their own weightage so weighted sum right this is a summation so when you give an input that is not one input but it is a sum of weighted sum of several inputs if you pass that through the system the output right output is going to be what output is going to be oh i have another summation here i have the weights which is same as wk so it is sum of correspondingly weighted this is the interesting deal h of fk of x comma y what is h h of this guy oh h of f of x comma y is g of x comma y which was the output to that particular input that means h of f k of x comma y means if the input was f 1 of x comma y the output would be h of f 1 of x comma y would be g 1 of x comma y so essentially this represents the output to individual inputs f 1 of x comma y f 2 of x comma y so physically what does this mean this means if i provide to the system right if i present to the system a weighted sum of different functions right the output of the system right the output of the system will be sum of correspondingly weighted output to corresponding inputs okay so make it life simple i mean is very similar in fact um, but for the the variables used very similar to your uh, 1d right linearity so you would have used t but here you are using some x and y so just to write it out so if k is equal to 2 just you know have two signals then a linear system satisfies the following that is when i present to the system a combination weighted sum of weighted combination of individual inputs w1 f1 w2 f2 so if i present f1 i know what is the output the output is h of f1 if i present f2 i know what is the output output is h of f2 if i present a combination weighted combination of this w1 f1 plus w2 f2 then the output is going to be corresponding outputs weighted by the same weights corresponding weights right w1 and w2 clear so this is very uh, important property and uh, why is this important then essentially we are getting to what happens if we can have a signal seen as a combination of signals so we'll treat everything with one input signal and then we can perhaps use this linear system theory and say oh i can uh, if i can see any input given sig any signal if i can break that signal as a, a weighted combination of multiple signals right then i i know how to handle it okay so it will become clear as we go forward <coughs> so the idea that i said is okay if you if you why is this powerful is there a way we could uh, talk about some arbitrary signal but before we move into arbitrary signal the whole idea of reviewing signal before this class is there are some interesting signals one of the first interesting signal that we uh, reviewed was it's not here it is point impulse okay so we would like to know because we know everything about point impulse we we talked about its importance what was the importance what was the salient feature well point impulse uh, you know at you know the delta function remember in one day we call it delta function here we called it as point impulse essentially what it did is we noted that by itself its definition is fine but it becomes interesting because it applies right it co cooperates it operates on a signal and then you have some interesting behavior 
recall one property we covered right sifting property so we will we'll come to that so the idea is okay that is an interesting signal now what happens if you present that signal to the linear system right so what happens to the output if my input is a interesting signal that interesting signal is nothing but a point uh, impulse as you know from your 1d when i put delta function as input the what is the output the output that you get is called as your system impulse response right similar only thing is we are going to call here we call it as point spread function because impulse we talked about point impulse so when it comes through the system the point is spread so the system how does it respond to a point it spreads the point so it is the point spread function okay also called as the point spread function so how do we write oh so your h of x comma y right this is a arbitrary function right epsilon minus epsilon and eta we'll talk about that so what happens this is your h system so if i present my system right if i present my system with an input what is this input oh input is a point impulse delta right delta of x comma y is how we define but then we made it little more general by saying it can also be moved around right so we present with a arbitrary delta function which has an offset epsilon and eta then the so this is the input into the system the output is called your point spread function so clearly this is good right so if i know about the system if i can talk about the system if i want to analyze the system now all i need to do is analyze this h of the behavior of h of x comma y comma theta and eta that will tell me about the system but not so desirable thing is it is a variable there are four variables there so it becomes com it's a four dimensional signal h becomes a four dimensional signal four dimensional signal is good mathematically it might be good i mean so it's good to work with it but when you talk about practicality it might be uh, important for us to understand what the physical meaning of this is can we reduce it to a more tractable form and uh, yet not lose the generality not lose the underlying see mathematics always tries to capture the underlying physical meaning right so we shouldn't lose that part but at the same time we have to make some conditions or uh, look for certain assumptions look for certain uh, uh, um, ways to reduce the mathematical intractability okay i mean but it is doable right but it's not practical so we will try to see if there is any simpler way that we can invoke certain conditions first thing that comes to <coughs> uh, so before we do that that's fine let's just connect the two concepts so now if you have an arbitrary input function f of x comma y right so if you have a arbitrary input function this we know right the first slide that we started when system review we said oh if you present it with f of x comma y present what the system so it operates h operates on the f of x comma y to give an output g of x comma y so for an arbitrary input i know my output okay so now the question is how can i write an output if this is my input right if i am presented with the input that we see right so how do you the interesting thing is this oh if you present arbitrary signal f of x comma y i get g of x comma y operating through the system so that is good right but i cannot simplify that without knowing anything further about the h but now i know something about the h what is that h something that about h i know oh that is the system impulse response so i know if i present an impulse to the system right if i present an impulse to the system i know my impulse response 
So, now can we think about presenting the system with impulse multiplied. So, the arbitrary signal right f of x comma y I can actually see that arbitrary function as a collection of impulse function at different locations. This is what we saw through shifting property right when you look at go back and when you review the shifting property you will recognize that any arbitrary signal f of x comma y can be seen as a collection of right you are using this uh, uh, delta function go look we can use that to pick points on the surface right yeah. from f of x comma y. So, that is at if if you are picking it from epsilon comma eta then the value of f is picked at that location right that is what your uh, shifting property we covered that is what we covered for your point impulse. So, here essentially what we do is I know something about this h which is the system impulse response how does it behave to the impulse. So, now you see how cleverly an arbitrary signal f of x comma y can be seen as nothing more than a collection of right different locations you have the impulse you are picking off that value and you have the double integral your summation. So, your g of x y which is your output to uh, arbitrary input f of x y can be connected through the behavior of system impulse response ok. So, let us see. So, this is uh, good, but not so good. The good news is now it seems like there is a mathematical form to connect the input and output. In fact, any arbitrary f x x y can be operated upon if I know my h of x comma y comma zeta comma y. If I know this that is in other words if I know the system impulse then I could generate or predict any output ok. So, that is good, but what is not so good is in order to evaluate this double integral you have to know everything about this h which may or may, may, or may not be possible all the time at least knowing h all the four dimensions may not be possible all the time. So, what do we do? Of course, if you, you should have probably recognize this equivalent. So, this is your superposition integral ok. Superposition integral connects your output to input and system function in the form of right integral. So, this superposition theorem you would have studied right for linearity. So, this is just a extension of it but it gets little complicated because the dimensionality is increasing otherwise mathematically is a straightforward extension. So, now what we will do we will essentially proceed forward and uh, try to see if we can address this issue we have four dimensions for h can we reduce the dimension is there any way to make it little more mathematically, mathematically tractable. So, as you can see here we will invoke this idea of shift invariance. So, if you are wondering oh you know I have I have done linear in one dimension I have done it. So, I know linearity is similar what is the shift invariance probably I have not heard shift invariance as is, but you probably would recognize the time invariance because most of like I said most of the time in one dimension we talk with the time as your independent variable. So, you would have heard something called linear time invariant system right that makes life life lot easier for you in one day. Similar thing here we have a equivalent which is shift invariance. So, that means what would it try to do oh I have my impulse instead of uh, 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 time invariance means you are moving along the time the offsets in time right. Here there should be shift in position spatial shift whether your h is sensitive to where you shift or not is is the is the idea here. So, it turns out if the system is shift invariant if it is shift invariant then this is what happens h of so, you have f of x comma y if you have f of x comma y the output is g of x comma y 
if I present f of x minus x naught y minus y naught what does that mean I have an input but now I am moving the input right I am shifting it in the, the input space and then I have a system so what comes out of the system the output so the output shift by the same amount okay so if this is my input right and I am moving so if I shift my input I present it through the system my output moves exactly the same way right exactly the same way that is what is your shift in variance in other words it does not matter how you arrived there if it presented with that input f of x comma y you get the output g of x comma y if you shift the input that is you shift it in x naught and y naught your output of your f of x comma y will also move by x naught and y naught so why is this important ah now suddenly you see we had four dimensions right the h can be you know brought down to only two dimension now i am not worried about shifts i am not worried about the offsets i am only worried about x and y right where it is and how it integrates with the signal that's what is going to determine my output okay so therefore lsa system right yields h of x minus theta y of uh, sorry y minus uh, eta as h of delta of this shift. So, if I present a shifted input right delta functions output is shifted version of the system function. This is very powerful right. So, using the shift invariance if it is a LSI system then this shifting of your delta function or imp point impulse just shifts your system impulse response okay so now uh, looking back to our superposition integral right we we just saw that and it there was a h with four dimensions so let's see what happens so your g of x comma y which is your output is becoming f of theta comma eta times this guy. So now you notice suddenly it becomes little more tractable right. So I can get my g of x comma y similar concept g of x comma y I have you know f of theta comma eta in terms of my h right so system connections input and output are related by the system function only thing is it is now more compliant system it is not only linear it is also shift invariant okay so this you can you will i mean this is this looks complicated because of the variables are kind of new to you but if i tell you just quick example if you replace this x and y right or imagine this x and y is your t right and your theta and eta to be your tau ah now you kind of of course you can even simplify it little further because of the denotions you can start call this y as g as y and uh, input as x right then you get and of course you won't have two integrals you will have d tau right oh x of t h of t minus tau d tau integral you get y of t this is your convolution only thing is its variables are different and you have one more dimension so it looks new but otherwise this is straightforward extension okay so what is this that means i and expect that you know what that means that is your convolution so output is nothing but your input system response convolved with your input that is your output clear exactly same or equivalent to your one dimension that you probably are very familiar it is an extension ok. So, nothing more to be trot there let us move on let us get some examples done right there will be homework or assignments where you will be able to work on some of this. Um,
again the level here is going to be just a review so i expect that you uh, go through the textbooks and you know signals and systems textbooks you may have lot of 1d brush up your familiarity with 1d so that this becomes easier so now the question is is this linear shift invariate system the the deliberate reason i pick this is because most of you when you look at this you may probably pounce and say oh i know the answer i mean you know i i ball i know what it is but uh, the challenge in signals and systems especially uh, now that it is now 2d is going to be when you try to solve something then you will get a lot of confusion unless you are systematic in writing right if you had uh, while you write you are able to see the physical connection only then there is a then it's a real material that you really have learnt it if you eyeball and you feel ah looking at it i know right um, what will happen then probably if it gets to a, a difficult see i am deliberately taking some e easy examples here but in real world you know it's going to be a lot more challenging so if you have to bother with real signals little higher uh, signals that are a little more complicated it's better you develop good habits so write it out right so when you have like this what do you um do ah first thing is what is what is linear system linear shift invariant system so what is linear system linear system says if i am presented with arbitrary input right i mean not arbitrary, sum of different individual inputs so if i have f1 i get g1 if i get f2 i get g2 if i am submit presented with summation weighted sum of right so let me let me let me i i think it will be good if you can write as we speak right so if i say for example just for uh clarity i don't want to call it g of xy because we want to check whether g of xy is linear system or not so if i say g dash of x comma y is the output that you get when you present it with a combination weighted combination of input signals right so let's say uh the, 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 let's say you have a weighted combination let's say use the same variable k 1 to some capital k so this you want to do with f of x k f this thing right this is exactly from your previous slide so so i am calling this right the output to this is this guy rather uh what should i say let's use the same variable i mean i, I don't have h explicitly here, so let's just that's not equal to so if this is presented to the system right this is the output okay you see the carefulness here because i i didn't have h here, so i'm given the system so h is hidden there okay so this is the case so let's see what uh, is this a linear system or not what happens if i do this oh let's uh, see what happens if i present this as the input i am given the system here right so it is going to be this is my input so the output is going to be two times uh, this guy k w k f k of x comma y oh of course if uh, this is the case how do i i mean i could write it little more clearly as two times uh, the input just to recognize that this is f this is x the two is probably to do with the system so let's just put a bra bracket right so this immediately you can recognize okay i can do this k w k right i can get the two inside 2 fk of x comma y so you can eyeball now of course let's uh, uh write the next step and say if you eyeball now what happens oh this appears to be very recognizable 
what is that oh 2 times f of x y is g x y. So, 2 times f k of x y will be or can be recognized as g k of x comma y clear. So, now what does this say this is my g dash of x comma y. So, when you read this out what in what comes through oh my new output right when presented with a when presented with a weighted combination of inputs right my new output is nothing but correspondingly weighted sum of individual outputs to the uh, outputs to the individual inputs wow is not that what we defined as linear. So, that means it says g of x equal to 2 of 2 times f of x comma y is a linear system because it we just read it out exact same physical interpretation of this out this uh, relationship uh, you know amounts to the definition for linearity. So, next is so oh, is this uh, okay linear is fine is this shift invariant what do you do for shift invariant oh I need to shift the input. So, let us say if I present the input instead of f of x comma y right I present my g of x comma y you get the output when I present instead of f comma y x minus x naught comma y minus y naught if I present to the system right a uh, shifted version of the input what is the output that is your g dash of x right. So, then what happens if I present this then my right you look at this look at here if I present this as an input my output is going to be 2 times if I if I 2 times f of x minus x naught comma y minus y naught going to be g of x minus x naught comma y minus y naught oh that is g dash of x comma y is nothing but shifted version right both are same. So, essentially this is shift invariant as well clear. So, let us do one more just uh, uh, we will not do it one more time again now we can eyeball, but then we can eyeball with some uh, no uh, steps written already. So, g of x comma y is equal to x y of f of x comma y is this a linear shift invariant system. So, looking at it you can quickly see the similarity between the this problem and the previous problem. Oh, if you recognize x y to be 2 right pretty much you can follow the same steps you can you can say let us call g dash of x comma y as the new output when presented with the system when the system is presented with a collection of uh, inputs sum of collection of inputs right weighted sum of inputs. So, you can pretty much see that you can carry forward this only thing is instead of this 2 here you will have when you pass it through the system you will have output as x comma y right. But you will recognize that if this is x comma y it does not alter this equation right. So, you will pretty much find g dash of x comma y will be summation of w k g k of x comma y which says that it is linear system. Is this a shift invariant what do you do for shift invariance ah, same thing right I have to shift the input what happens to the output is that same as if I shift the output or the individual output. So, for example, if I if I do uh, shift of input right f of x comma x minus x naught f of y minus y naught 
if that is my input let us say I get g dash of x comma y right this is my output but if I look at here what is my shifted output g of x minus x naught comma y minus y naught what is that oh that is going to be x minus x naught into y minus y naught times f of x minus x naught y minus y naught clearly the x minus x naught and y minus y naught makes it unequal so the if you shift the output that is not same as because you get x minus x naught into y minus y naught term which was only x into y if you consider presenting delayed input so clearly it is not shift invariant so what the message is linearity shift invariance two are two concepts if you have linearity that does not mean it implies shift invariance or vice versa clear so that is something that uh, is very powerful so we will end up using linear shift invariant system for our imaging system i mean uh, i think the message should be very clear that it is not just because we can solve all this and get some easy mathematical traction it turns out that uh, um, the simplification does not really take away the ability to model right a general imaging system at least most of the uh, imaging systems that we are going to cover here for the most common usage i think linear systems theory is very very much uh, um, you know it, physically also um, very representative right we are not just doing things for mathematical traction but it doesn't uh, you know hold good in practice i think this is powerful yet powerful for the reason that uh, it makes life simple yet it doesn't really ca it captures vast majority of the imaging systems i mean in in our case almost all of the imaging system that we are going to cover here introduce at least the most common imaging modes that are available you will be able to uh, get through this okay so uh, uh, let's just quickly run through few additional uh, important aspects so we covered else uh, linear shift invariant system so now the question is oh do we just have one system what happens if you have more than one system and usually this happens right you have subsystems so it depends on how you define input what is output and what is the system that is so for example in this case uh, if i am the input right i am i am uh, say let's take the optical image uh, the camera that we have so i am the source right and then there is a camera system that is recording then there is a audio system that is recording all of this is you know compiled together and that that uh, multimedia is streamed so that is one system right <coughs> but then that multimedia is streamed using some internet and then you have you are going to log in and probably download the video and using your say for example mobile phone or a laptop or pc or whatever that is going to read the data right and it is going to display it and you are going to have some speaker or earphone or right so you are going to listen and see so if you really look at it input is this 3d distribution output which you are looking right is a close or better be a close representation of the input and then what constitutes the system here oh everything that went in between the input and the output the true representation and the image that you see of me right that is your output this is 3d is the input everything in between is actually one system as per what we have done right but then you see the problem it is good i mean it's it's it, it it's very general we are able to capture that oh i know what the system is the uh, system consists of the the camera and the microphone that is there in the recording room and then the inter, uh, the the pc that is used to process the data and then the internet and then your pc or your mobile phone that subsystem in fact you then uh, is the speaker output or you are connecting it to some other 
uh, home theater. Probably for this you won't connect to home theater, but I'm just saying. The idea is you have another. So the, all these are, even though we said that it's one block system, you can actually see this as a series of subsystems. So you can have multiple systems. Right? It's about how you want to analyze, right? So you are going to encounter. If I know how to characterize one system, that's why we talked about linear invariant, shift invariant system. Can we look at combinations of system? Because there are going to be subsystems, right? So, what are the ways we can look at combinations of system? So, what we call as connections of linear shift invariant systems, right? How can you connect? So, let us take for example two systems just so that we can uh, eyeball and uh, make pat ourselves and say, oh, I understand it, right? But it is basically connection of multiple systems. But what are the ways you think you can connect two systems? Either you can connect through series, right? Two systems in series or you can connect two systems in parallel. Right. So, that means when I say system, since this is shift in linear shift in variate systems, each one all I need to know is if I know the H1, I, I say that that is a system I know. If I know H2, that is my system. Right. So, now what is the, if you connect them in series, as you can see here, it is equivalent to having only one system whose system function is nothing but that combines H1 and H2. What, how does it combine? This operator, what is that operator? Convolution. So, if I have, right, if I have an input F, the output of this L LSI is going to be H1 convolved with F. And that output, right, H1 convolved with F goes into the input what will be the output G? Oh, G is going to be H2 convolved with whatever went in. What went in? H1 convolved with F. That is the one that went in. Right. So, you can then see, oh, that means my output and input, output and input are connected through this system, which is H1 convolved with H2. Right. All these properties of commutative, associative, you know, right? I can do H1 uh, convolution, the convolution properties, H1 convolved with H2 or H2 convolved with H1, right? <coughs> All this you have to review. But otherwise, you are getting one system equivalent. That equivalent, the system response is nothing but convolution of the two subsystems. This is in series. Similar logic you can extend if you have H1 and H2, right? So, what will be the output here? Oh, this will be H1 convolved with F. This will be H2 convolved with F. So, G is going to be nothing but sum of these two, right? So, if you have in parallel, that means you can reduce that to a, a single equivalent system whose impulse response or the system function is nothing but sum of the individual ones. Clear? So, and these things will come in very handy. Like I said, physically, when I talked about the example of you know, recording and you seeing the video, uh, similar thing happens in the imaging system. You will have several modules of the imaging system, data acquisition, signal processing, display, Right, all of this is a imaging system. We say so. There are several sub modules, and uh, you will benefit from the ability to uh, recognize that you can start to look at a complex system as a, a connection of uh, subsystems, and therefore you know how to analyze. Okay, so um, we will stop right here. Uh, we will start with the Fourier transform. Fourier transform is a very powerful concept whatever we did so far we did in spatial domain right so we started to look at signal 2d signal as nothing but a, a spatial representation physical meaning was spatial representation of a pattern now can we analyze do the system analysis instead of convolution can we have another aspect another tool set that can be invoked right which brings us to Fourier transform. Okay. 
So, um, looking at this, you probably recognize it immediately. This is your Fourier transform and this is your inverse Fourier transform, right. So, let us stop here. Uh, let us stop here. I will actually start from Fourier transform in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.